Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and today we're gonna take a look at this sheet metal example. This comes from a practice models challenge that I shared with the crew on Model Monday Live earlier this week, 2024-11-12 SM riser pad. So this practice models challenge features a sheet metal design with a little jog that's sticking up here. And ideally that jog gets patterned around into these four locations. Well, I ran into a little problem when I tried to do that. I was able to create the, the tab that's sticking out here. I was able to create the jog where we kind of bend that tab up. But then when I went to create the circular pattern, I ran into a, a limitation or a problem with SolidWorks. And that problem was that when I choose this edge here to do the circular pattern and I choose the tab, everything works fine i'm able to get the pattern of the tab but then when i go to choose the jog it says unable to pattern the selected feature jog on tab one so you know the reason why i'm not able to pattern the jog that's that's probably a conversation for another day but ultimately i was only able to pattern the tab itself now, after I created that pattern of the tab, I was able to one at a time go through here and create the jog. But then I ran into another problem. What about when I wanna make a change to this model? So if I click on this jog here, you'll see that I've got a dimension here indicating where the jog is, is uh, coming from, from that corner. So I could take this number here and I could increase this to seven, but it only increases it for that jog. I could increase this to 12, but it only increases it for that jog. It doesn't increase it for the other three instances. This is why I created a pattern is nice. Well, in today's Power Move video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to create what's called a global variable and then to assign that global variable to two or more dimensions in your model so that all those tabs will grow and shrink together. Ow! So what we've got in this model is we've got these one, so this 12 here, two, 4.94, three, 4.94, and four dimensions that are all disconnected. And we wanna create a global variable so that we can just change that value in one spot and it automatically updates all four dimensions. And setting up global variables is something that's very easy to do in SolidWorks, but it's also very valuable, not only throughout your entire SolidWorks career, but especially when you go to take your CSWP certification. If you're out there and you've ever been interested in passing your certified SolidWorks professional exam, it's gonna be really valuable for you to know how to set up your global variables, especially in the first section of that exam. And this is something that I talk about a lot in my CSWP prep training class. I've got a link down below in the description to that training class. And so if you've ever been interested in taking and passing your CSWP, now is the time. Take a look at that link down in the description. Most of my students pass the exam within one week of purchasing that material. And it really does give you everything you need to take and pass that CSWP on the first try including a lesson all about global variables, which is what we're gonna be talking about today. So to set up a global variable, what you need to do is go over here to the tree to your folder called equations. Now, not everyone has a folder called equations in their SolidWorks tree. And the reason for that is found here in your options, system options, feature manager, and then there's a section in here in Feature Manager called Equations. So is your equations folder shown or not? Well, that's gonna be based on that setting. So you can toggle that to show, and that way you'll have an equations folder in your tree. Or if you prefer to leave that hidden, you can also access this by going Tools, Equations. Tools, Equations brings up this box here, or we can right mouse button on the equations folder, and we can choose Manage Equations. Now, when you're working in a sheet metal model, you're always gonna have a global variable here called thickness. This is actually what's called a linked dimension. That's why it shows up with that kind of chain link symbol on it, a linked dimension. And that's gonna be in every sheet metal design, you're gonna have one of these global variables called thickness. So we're gonna go underneath that field and we're gonna create a new global variable called jog offset. So I just type that in, I'm gonna press tab, that advances me over to the column for value slash equation. I'm gonna type six, enter, and now I have created my first global variable in SolidWorks. Now you can do this on any model. It doesn't have to be a sheet metal model. I just happen to have a sheet metal model, so I've got that extra variable in there. But you could do this on any model, just make a global variable, give it a name, and give it a value. 
we choose OK, and then we go into the sketch of that first jog. So I'm just going to go here and say Edit Sketch. I'm going to double click on this 12. Now you'll notice that Instant 2D is turned off. If Instant 2D is turned on, as soon as I click on that dimension, it becomes editable, and that's not what I want. So I'm going to turn off Instant 2D, and then I'm going to double click on that 12 dimension. Now on my keyboard, I'm going to type equals. I'm going to press the down arrow on my keyboard. That takes me to global variables. I'm going to press the over arrow on my keyboard. That takes me over to jog offset, and I'm going to press enter. And so now this dimension is going to equal the global variable for jog offset. I'll press enter again, enter again, and boom, it's just that easy. Now this dimension is hooked to an equation. I'm gonna exit that sketch. I'm gonna go to my next sketch here. So the next sketch, edit sketch, double click on this dimension. I'm gonna type in equals, the down arrow, the over arrow, enter, enter, enter. And now I've created a global variable linked to that value as well. In fact, I don't even have to go into sketch mode. If I just turn off instant 3D, so turn off instant 3D, same reason as turning off instant 2D, I can double click on this jog that brings up its dimensions. I can double click on this dimension here and I can say equals down arrow, over arrow, enter, enter, enter. And then I'm gonna go down to my final jog here in the tree, jog four, I'm gonna double click on that. I know it's kind of hidden by the keyboard cam. Let me see if I minimize this, there we go. Go to my final jog there, double click, double click, equals down arrow, over arrow, enter, enter, enter. And it really is just that easy. If we go back into our equations folder here, let me do a control Q to rebuild everything. If we go back into our equations folder here and we say manage equations, we can see that now we not only have the global variable up top, but we've also linked that global variable to D1 at sketch 10, D1 at sketch 11, D1 at sketch 12, and D1 at 13. So we just went through to each of those dimensions and we linked those dimensions to that global variable. And so this is the interface that you can use to edit Edit and to repair any equations that, that get messed up if you delete something inadvertently or your dimensions start erroring, this is where you're gonna wanna go to fix up those equations. But with that all being said, I can hit OK. Maybe I'll turn Instant 3D back on and then I'll click on uh, the, uh, the Manage Equations folder again. So here's the Manage Equations folder. I'm gonna say Manage Equations. And there's an option down here at the bottom of the Manage Equations folder that says Automatically Rebuild. So here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold Control and I'm gonna press on the middle mouse button on my mouse and that way I can pan the model over here, kind of move the model out of the way of the equations box. And then I can go into the equations box here and I can change this to 10 and press enter and because I've got this automatically rebuild turned on you saw the whole model updated let me bump that back to 5 and press enter and it's so beautiful the whole model just updates all of those equations update and everything just works the way it's supposed to work so that's just kind of a brief overview of global variables but like i said it's a really simple thing that you can do a lot of times i'll do this with like draft angle so i'll put in a draft angle here of five and that way anytime i've got a draft angle i can hook it to that five degrees and then if the mold maker comes back to me and says actually we need that to be seven degrees well i just need to update it in one spot and then all those features that i use draft on get updated or if there's like a common fillet, I could create a common fillet uh, value here. I could say that's gonna be um, 2.5 millimeters. And that way, if that common fillet changes, if the machinist says, I don't have tooling in that size, can you bump that up to four millimeters? Well, I only have to change that in one spot and then all the fillets that use that value get updated, whether they're in a sketch or whether they're in a feature. So really, really powerful stuff here. And if you guys think you can find a good spot to use global variables, let me know. Let me know down in the comments. Let me know what you thought about this video. Of course, be sure to hit the like button on this video as well. If you're interested in some training, visit us at twotalltoby.com training, and I'll look forward to seeing everyone in the next video.